Hi, and thanks for following the Bite Size Beginner's Guide to the HP Reverb G2. In today's video, I'm going to share with you some really cool insights how to change the binding of the controllers. A big welcome to VR Essentials. By the way, we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality and VR educational content. Very nice to meet you if you're here to the platform. And a big welcome back, of course, to all our regular subscribers. In the previous videos, we talked about how to adjust the floor height with some tips and tricks as to how to make sure you could continue your gameplay without any interruptions, as well as how to optimize Optimize your graphics to make sure you don't have any stutter of any kind when you launch your apps for the very first time, as well as how to set up your audio, your mic, and a ton of other good stuff. Now until there is a software update, what you really need to understand as the golden rule is any VR experience that you're going to open with your HP Reverb G2 and the Windows Mixed Reality software, if you have downloaded them through Steam, to open them through Steam VR. Let me demonstrate exactly what I mean via a test that you can follow with me. Now the first step is go to Task Manager and end any Windows Mixed Reality services as well as any Steam and Steam VR services. Now open Steam first. Now once that's open, go to the top right hand side and open Steam VR. Now as Steam VR opens and the pop-up comes on the screen, your Windows Home Mixed Reality software is automatically going to open up as well. Now if your Windows Home Mixed Reality is telling you that you can't access your computer, make sure to hit the Windows and Y key so you can control everything through your computer and not via your VR headset. Okay, now what I'd like you to do is go back to your computer and make sure that you have the Steam Windows open, not Steam VR. Now choose an app that you regularly use where it requires you to use your hands quite a lot, maybe Half-Life Alyx or something like that. But if you have Skyrim, open Skyrim. Now once it's open with your mouse, hit the play button and then let the app open up inside of your VR headset. Now, if your floor height is all over the place, by the way, once you're inside of your VR game, do go and check out the previous video where I show you how to adjust it. Okay, so you see for me, my floor height is all good. So I'm gonna go towards the table where I can actually pick up some objects, including a bow and arrow. Now, as you can tell, when I'm pointing my controller towards one of the objects, the game is telling me to use the A button in order to pick up those objects. Now that is the correct controller binding in order to play the game. Now you'll notice that when I press the Windows button on my controller and my main navigational panel comes up and then I choose, let's say home to go back to the Windows Home Mix Ready software, you're gonna see what's gonna happen now. Now what I'm going to do is hit the Windows button once more, open the panel and I'm gonna go and search for Skyrim. Now once I find it, I'm gonna point my controller towards it, click on the trigger and let the app open once more until I'm inside of Skyrim again. Now, as you can tell, when I'm back at the table where I'm supposed to pick up some objects, the game is no longer telling me to use the A button in order to pick up the objects. It's telling me to press and hold the right thumbstick. If you wanted to go back on your computer and click again on the green play button, and you would have gone back inside of the actual app itself, then you can notice again that there's the error where it's asking me not to use the A button to pick up the objects, but again, press the right thumbstick. Now, this is an error between the Windows Mixed Reality software and Steam VR. All you have to do is press on your Windows button on your controller and then select Home. Now, once you're back at Windows Mixed Reality Home, all you have to do is click on the Windows controller button again, open up the main navigation UI, and then go and search for Steam VR. Okay, once you found it, point your controller and click the trigger, and then you'll see it'll pop up inside a little panel inside of your home. Once you do that, point your controller again and click the trigger and let yourself be teleported to Steam VR Home. Now select Skyrim once more and then launch the app from there. And then once you're inside, go back to the table where you see the bow and arrow again. And then normally if you point your controller towards the objects, the game is gonna tell you again that of course, you can use the A button to pick up the object so it's the correct controller binding this time. So as I mentioned, if you wanna avoid all these kind of issues, just make sure that when you go to the All App section, click on Steam VR, go back to Steam VR Home, and then launch your app from there. Now let's just imagine you want to edit your controller bindings for any reason whatsoever. Let me show you how to do that. Now, all you have to do to bring up, by the way, the Steam VR control panel at any time is hit the three little bar icon button on one of your controllers either the left or the right, which is next to the Windows logo button. Now, if you're watching from one of the previous videos, which was all about how to optimize the video settings so that you don't have any stutter or lagging of any kind, just make sure that you do not touch the video settings inside of the control panel within VR. Until there is a software update, you'll notice that if you made any changes on the computer within SteamVR, are gonna be different to the video settings in SteamVR 
in VR itself. So now let's focus our attention on control binding. Now point your controller towards that and use your trigger to open it up. Now the great thing is that Steam VR enables you to edit any controller bindings on a per application basis. Once you click on the drop down with your trigger, you'll notice all the various different VR applications that you can use using Steam VR. Once you've chosen your application, under that you'll notice it says Active Controller and indeed it will mention the HP Active Motion Controller. Now under that is where it gets very interesting because this is where you can make all your edits. You'll see active controller binding if you want to edit anything then all you have to do is click on custom diving deeper into the rabbit hole this is where you get a couple more options either you can choose to edit the current binding which you have or you can choose another binding altogether so let's go with that first so what will happen is a new tab will open up with some new information so let's start from the top down now at the very top you'll see a back button so if you want to go back you can just click that at any time and under that is going to tell you which current binding you're presently using which you can actually edit and then on the right hand side it's going to let you know the current controller which you're going to be making your edits to underneath you're going to see default bindings which are basically recommended by the Microsoft Mixed software to use for this specific app and underneath you're going to see what's called community bindings now these bindings of course are edited by the actual Steam community itself to potentially enhance the gameplay and have a more immersive and comfortable experience so what you can do is you can click on the view button to get more information about this binding telling you exactly where the buttons go where and what buttons activate what specific action in the gameplay and Steam VR gives you the flexibility to be able to edit any community binding as well to exit you could press the hamburger button icon again on your controller or you could click on back and then click on the thumbnail picture and then click on return to game now when using the Xbox S controller there's equally a lot of troubleshooting to do so let's both me in the next video where I'm going to share with you some inside tips and tricks as to how to use your Xbox S controller without any issues of any kind let's go